Good morning, Todd. Hey, good morning, Jean. Great to see you again. Delighted oh, to be so, here again. Yeah, so good to have you here. And I just want to introduce you to people. This is Todd Larson, and he is a medical sales executive with Aetna Health, with Alina Health Aetna. And I got it right. That's a mouthful. Um, and Todd, I love, you know, you've got such an extensive background in this field and I love uh, the way you explain things. You're going to show us some slides. We're going to go over some things that I know we have talked about before, but I just don't think we can hear them enough because the, it gets a little confusing for people, I think. It's easy for you guys to, you know, you go over it all the time and, um, yeah. and you're, you know, much younger, but uh, it's, it's kind of hard sometimes for these older, Not older that much. <laughs> yeah, these older people. So, so Todd, uh, tell us, um, now, uh, you're going to be talking about the differences between original Medicare, Medicare Advantage, and Medigap plans. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, and as I think about it, you know, so to your point, Gene, we covered some of this ground for sure in the last few segments uh, between myself and my colleague, Benita. Perhaps you, uh, your viewers have had a chance to see some of those segments. And um, it's just a, you know, sometimes we feel like, you know, you, you can look at this information in a variety of ways. And, and what we'll do today is we'll just kind of look at it from a different slice, from a different perspective, uh, yeah. really kind of comparing you know, these, these different elements of Medicare, because there are kind of a few chunks of ways in which people can get their Medicare. And um, just having an understanding of how that works can help them as a, as a consumer, as a purchaser of, of health and, and health insurance. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's kind of what I, the, the, the angle that I want to take today. Okay. Um, God, and, what? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the question just comes to my mind. Um, how many people in Minnesota or across the country have Medicare? I mean, is it yeah. like a huge amount or what? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. So, you know, when you think here in our, in our home state here of Minnesota, we've got, I believe it's about 5.6 million people in the state. And um, of that 5.6 million, uh, about a th about a million of them have Medicare. So it's a pretty good chunk. I mean, obviously you don't have the youngest people necessarily on Medicare. Um, if they're disabled, they might have a Medicare plan, but, but generally it's when we hit that, 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 uh, that age point of 65 uh, that we get to, to, to that point of Medicare. So you just think about, okay, five and a half million folks here in Minnesota, about 20% of them or a million people are, sit, are, are on a Medicare product. So it's a big chunk of people. And it really yeah. reigns true as well throughout the country. Um, it's about 18 to 19%. I was just looking at some stats from the, the Kaiser Family Foundation, uh, foundation based out of California. They have tons of great statistics. And, and, they were, and it was kind of a verifying for me, you know, those folks that have, uh, uh, have, have Medicare access. And so, uh, you know, when we think about the federal government, it's, you know, it's the largest insurer in the country, really. It, it really is just, just by virtue of insuring through Medicare. Mm -hmm. So it's a big chunk of people for sure. And it's what wakes me up every morning, Gene. That I, I know that I've got, I know that I've got an opportunity out there to, to meet with folks. And, and well, Todd, the one thing I, I love so much about you, and I told you this last time we interviewed, is that you love what you're doing. You know, <laughs> you love just, you know, helping people and working with this. And you're so knowledgeable. And I just, you can just hear the excitement and see the excitement in your face when you start talking about it. So, well, thank you. I, I, yeah. I, I appreciate that. And I do, and I do enjoy it. I, a little bit about myself, I'll give a little lead in. I, I, yeah. I did it last time as well, but I, um, I've been in the, this healthcare space, this health insurance space for my career, which spans a little over 25 years. And um, much of my work was in the commercial business, but I also had a play of doing kind of the, uh, the employer accounts, uh, which also have Medicare plans. But then I've also been on you know, some other facets, uh, uh, part of the pharmacy. We, we, we kind of dissected the pharmacy in our last segment, so we aren't going to cover much on that today. But uh, there's certainly a lot to know about in that element as well. 
Um, mm-hmm. and, and, um, and now I've been in this Medicare spot for a number of years and, and really do enjoy it. It's great. It's great working with individuals one-on-one, uh, answering questions, hopefully guiding them to the, the options that we, we offer, which are many, but, um, but, but it's also just a, a process of getting people engaged because once they learn and have some more information, they just become a better consumer, you know, yeah. themselves. And, just and, say, and saving people money, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, for sure. So huge. You bet. You'll hear me say I'm a huge proponent of not buying more coverage than you need, just like anything else, right? I mean, um, you know, if I want a, you know, quick sandwich at at the deli, um, I'm not going to go to the to the steak restaurant to get that, right? And so it's just, you know, it's it's thinking about what are the products that are available to me and buying the right product for me, and um, and so it is a, you know, it's kind of that process of of knowing what's in the market and, and uh, learning. And, 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 you don't you know, the other thing I'll say too, about this, this industry gene is that sometimes I think we make it more complicated than it needs to be. I think that, um, you know, it's a process as a consumer of kind of just like anything else, kicking the tires occasionally. It doesn't have to be every year, but maybe every couple of years, you, you kind of look under the hood and you take a peek and you say, what do I have? Is it right for me? Have my needs changed? Is there something better out there in the market today that wasn't there five years ago? And I bet you there is. Um, yeah. And so, you know, because we, you know, we, uh, you know, just like any other product or service we, we purchase, they become more efficient, they become, you know, better, um, and, uh, and sometimes offer new um, innovations in the industry that can benefit you as an individual. Mm-hmm. So, well, I know, and I know you're going to tell us this, you're going to tell us why we need something more than just what the government provides. I am. Yeah. Should we dive in a little bit? Yep. Let's dive in. All right. Let's dive I'm in. I'm anxious so, to see your slides. Okay. You bet. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll actually, I'll pull up a couple of them here real quick here. Um, and um, let me just do that right now. And um, so this first screen, so this is all about me, right, Gene? Yeah. Uh, and so, so my, my, my information here, my contact information. Uh, if you're uh, looking to make a connection here in Minnesota, or you, or even if you're, you know, throughout the country, you want to get connected. I'm part of uh, Alina Health and Aetna. We are a joint venture organization here in the Twin Cities, so we're a very large uh, provider of care in the Alina Health System. Partnered up with this very large national insurer called Aetna, and yeah. um, so the two of them together, that's that's my employer and that's my contact information. So if I can okay. help anybody yeah. here that's listening today, uh, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to, to guide you to resources and, and potentially if you're here in Minnesota, I'd love to help you as well. So thanks for yeah. that opportunity. Okay, good. This is good. You have this slide. Great. Real good. So let's just, so, so I'm just going to tee up. This is a slide that I sh- shared earlier. So if you saw one of the other segments, I, I've, you've seen this one before. But when no. I think of when I, okay, this might be, this one might be new. And, and so th- what basically, you know, when we talk about, Medicare, we kind of talk about the A, B, C, Ds of Medicare, uh, and they are um, they are purposeful, um, you know, acronym here because they, they they represent something for the types of Medicare that you m- might be choosing. Um, the federal government uh, or original Medicare really consists of two parts. It's Part A and it's Part B, as as the, the slide indicates here. And you'll see underneath those two letters, you'll see kind of what they represent, how they what they cover for your insurance. The Part A covers your hospital care. So it's essentially a, an insurance element in Medicare that is giving you the, the, the coverage that you need if you go into the hospital, if you need um, outpatient uh, hospitalization, uh, if you need hospice, if you need um, uh, uh, skilled nursing facilities, those types of things can give you that, that type of coverage. Uh, and, and it's a, something that you uh, likely earned through your employment by paying into FICA throughout your career. If you've lived, if you've worked for ten years, you get Part A. If you haven't worked for Part A or, or for ten years, or your 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 spouse ha- or your spouse hasn't, then you might have a, a tuition or a monthly premium that you pay for Part A. But most people throughout the United States uh, have Part A when they turn sixty-five. So, so Todd, if your husband, if you haven't worked and your husband's worked, then you still get the Part A. I mean, that is correct. Yep, much like, like a, you so- have to do it yourself. You got it, Gene. Exactly okay. right. Much like a social security benefit, sometimes you can benefit from a spouse's employment, and uh, right. that's the case with Medicare as well. Exactly. Okay, good. So then you got Part B as a part of Original Medicare, and that really covers what we consider it's underneath the, the letter B. It says medical services, and it's really, um, you know, those 
those transactional things that we do on a regular basis, um, which is, uh, you know, thinking about um, uh, uh, doctor's office visits, thinking about um, uh, any x-rays or lab work or those types of things that you might need uh, while you're getting your care. So you kind of have, you know, you've got these two major parts of coverage, hospitalization and everything else kind of, uh, the things that you think about when you go into a doctor's visit or specialist, et cetera. Um, and you get really nice coverage with original Medicare. Now, for part, for part B, you're going to have to pay an additional tuition or, pre, or monthly premium. Most people across the country this year are paying $148.50 per month for Part B. It's giving you then that coverage uh, while you go in to see a doctor. So um, as you think about it, that, that's your Part A and your Part B. That's original Medicare. You know, there are some co-pays associated if you land in the hospital uh, with Part A. Um, uh, it's not necessarily cheap. If you land in the hospital under original Medicare, it's going to cost you about 1500 bucks for, for as a copay. Uh, and wow. it, yeah, it's a, it's a chunk of money, right? And, yeah. and so that's something that could really get your attention. Yeah. Um, and so then there's this part B, uh, or I should say with part B, you're, you're paying 148.50 a month for your monthly premium, likely most folks are, uh, but then you do have some co-pays there too. And really what they are is they are deductibles and co-insurances. And what, what it really is, is if you go into, if you just have original Medicare and you need to see a doctor because of an eye infection or a condition or some kind of an illness or injury, um, you're going to have to pay a deductible first before you see, or, you know, for your first set of coverage, just like a deductible on smashing up your car. You pay the first amount of money and then the insurance kicks in. Here, that amount is $203 per year. So if I go into a doctor and it costs that the doctor charges $300 and I'm on original Medicare, I'm going to pay the first $203 of that visit. And then I'll have $97 left over and I'm going to have to pick up 20% of that. So another 20 bucks roughly. So I'm into it, you know, for that like 220 or 225. Then after that, it'll be 20%. So here you are, you're on original Medicare and it's kind of an 80-20 benefit. You know, you're, you know, you're getting lots of nice coverage, but you are going to pay about 20%, at least when you're going to see that doctor. Um, mm. And uh, that can add up, you know, those could be- Yeah, I was gonna say that adds up. You bet. So that's really what brings us to, you know, so I, I, as I'm describing this, Gene, that this is, that's kind of, you know, the, these of these three options, you know, what's original Medicare, what's Medicare Advantage, and what is Medicare Medigap or supplement? And so we're gonna we're gonna touch on each of those, and we're not we're not gonna dive super deep, but we're gonna kind of hit the highlights so everybody's got a foundational understanding. Mm -hmm. And so this this original Medicare, what I just described, that's kind of it, you know. And there's, you know, so let me give you an example. In Minnesota, when I look at um, at our statistics, and I see that we've got about a million people here in Minnesota that have Medicare. There's about half of them, like 500,000 that, that don't do anything beyond original Medicare. So lots of folks say, that's enough. That's good enough for me. I'm not going to get anything more than that. Um, I don't necessarily subscribe to that. Obviously, I work for an insurance company, but, I, but there are so many things out there for people to give themselves bet, more coverage at, at very low or, or, or in some cases, no additional expenses from original Medicare. And so there's a good reason to think about additional coverage. So now you have this other, or I should say, of this, you know, Minnesota got a half a million folks that are just original Medicare. But then I've got another half a million folks that are doing something else. They're, they're buying extra coverage. They're saying, hey, that 80 20 benefit sounds great from the federal government, but I want something more. I, I want to make sure I don't get stuck with a big, big ticket expense. Right. And so people choose uh, one of two options typically. They either choose Part C that you see here on the slide, which is a Medicare Advantage plan. That's what that's what the federal government calls Medicare Advantage plans. They call them C plans or Part C, and um, they provide a great set of coverage uh, at a very low cost. Um, and uh, they and they do a number of uh, additional things that that uh, you know benefit lots of people. I'll pause there, Gene, and just pause, see if you have any other questions, and then I'll dive into a little bit of uh, Medicare. Well, I, no, I don't, but I tell you, this is this chart right here is so, uh, explains it all so well. We need to, I really, we'll have to really put sure. this chart up because um, it is very, very um 
I, I even though I've sure. been listening to you and listening to um you know Benita and stuff, this chart really explains it so well. Thank you for this. I I yeah. really I understand this. This is like really making sense. Perfect, perfect. So so you have this, you have these C plans, these Medicare Advantage plans. And let's just dive into a few of the elements of that. So when you uh, are a Medicare beneficiary, you're eligible to purchase a Part C plan either at the annual election period or when you first become age 65. And um, what the reason people purchase these Part C plans is that they um, they kind of resemble th th this packaging of services. And so they, they do everything that A and B does, but then they do something a little bit more. Um, they add extra benefits. They add benefits for oftentimes for dental, oftentimes for um, vision, oftentimes for hearing. And those are benefits that typically are not covered under original A and B. So they add some extra things. One of the most important things that they also do is they oftentimes incorporate prescription drug coverage. So this part D that we're not going to spend a ton of time talking about prescription drugs, but it's a, but it's a very important part of of um, advantage plans is that now I've got A and B and the federal government doesn't do part D. They, they basically say, we want you to have prescription drug coverage, Gene. We want you, when you turn 65, we want you to have it. But they don't say, and here's the product for you to do that. They do have A and B if you want that to just keep that original, but they don't have anything that does uh, medication. And so they say, either go out and buy a, a medication product called a, a D plan or consider an advantage plan because it weaves oftentimes that that prescription drug coverage into the plan. So, um, you know, I think I, I even quipped last time that I'm not too um, too young to remember the Happy Meal at, at McDonald's, if I can if I can use their name. Uh, yeah. But you know, kind of the notion of packaging up services. You know, I get a hamburger and a set of fries and, and a drink for for one packaged meal, and it's the same thing with Advantage plans. Um, one of the things that you trade with with an Advantage plan, I'll say this too, is just that um, you get this. Um, uh, you get all of these extra benefits. You get all these, you know, nice features of the plan. Uh, uh, you're going to have some co-pays and some co-insurances within the plan. Uh, and I can speak a little bit to that. We won't dive too deeply in that, but, but they'll be very modest compared to your 20% on part B. They'll be sm much smaller than that and they'll cover you. What you're trading off is that with original Medicare A and B, you can go to see any provider that you want. It's a wide open network. You can see any provider who sees Medicare beneficiaries. Not all docs see Medicare beneficiaries, but the majority around the country do. With original Medicare, you can do that. On the Advantage plans, you're typically going to a contracted network of providers. You're typically going to a plan who has said, hey, we've got this group of doctors that we want you to predominantly use. It'll give you the best cost sharing, the lowest, lowest prices on co-pays. And we do that, we build that contracted network as a plan because it helps us manage our costs. It helps us understand what, what we might have contracted our rates at for particular procedures versus having it more broad or a bigger umbrella under the Medicare umbrella. Uh, so that's kind of the trade-off. And so you're kind of, as an advantage plan, you're moving into the process of having a network of providers. But there's so many plans out there. There's so many choices and options. Uh, you've got lots of flexibility to say, hmm, now my doc isn't in this plan, but they are over here. And this plan looks like it has a lot of good options for me too. And mm -hmm. so you basically have you know, lots of good choices that you can pick up. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why, just, that, yeah. that, Todd, is why they need to sit down and talk to someone like you because they don't really know all that, do they? I mean, how would they even know that? Yeah, it's a great question. You bet. And so, you know, I, I always used to say that, uh, you know, in this industry, we were way too quick uh, to say to our, our prospective customers and our existing members say, well, it's just online. Go ahead. You know, it's just, it's just straight yeah. online. Well, you know, everything's online, right? Yeah. That doesn't make it easier. That doesn't make it easier. So having it a conversation, it. you know, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just like anything else. You know, I can order something through the mail or I can go to the department store and touch it and there's benefits yeah. for both. Right. And, yeah. and so, you know, this is there's opportunity here that we can have a conversation. Say, hey, let's look up that provider, and I can I can show you how to do that, and I can do it really quickly for you. So yeah. those are things that we yeah. do together. So you bet. And and um, yeah, so those are a couple of things that that kind of um, uh, define these Medicare Advantage plans. And like I said, the majority of folks across the country, that's the additional coverage they purchase is Advantage plans. I'll give you an example, Gene, of kind of this 
this notion of having multiple products in the Advantage system is like even our company here in Minnesota, we offer five different plans. That's not overwhelming. I'm, I'm glad we don't offer too many, but, but uh, we offer enough so that you can have different price points. And like anything else, you know, the more you pay, the more you're buying, right? You, you kind of get what you pay for, right? So we have plans that start as low as no premium, no monthly premium, all the way up to our most expensive plan, which is $152 a month. And as you're purchasing more on a monthly premium basis, you're just buying more insurance, buying more coverage. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, I'm a, a big proponent of don't, don't buy more than you need, you know, buy, buy what, you need, buy what you need, buy what you want, buy what you need. Yeah. And so you have the, this flexibility to kind of um, consider shop and, and consider the options, et cetera. Um, okay. So this, I'm just clicking a, a couple of slides ahead. I'll click through my slides here, but this slide is kind of this notion of, you know, original Medicare is kind of 80, 20, where everything green here is what the federal government's going to pick up. And then you as, a, as the, an individual will have some additional expenses like that deductible, like your, uh, uh, your co-pay for the hospitalization, et cetera. And when you're, when you're migrating into a, a Medicare Advantage plan, then you're looking to get that gray area, those gray dollar signs, you're looking to get more of that covered up, you know, more of that into the green space, depending on the type of product you purchase. And so I mentioned, um, well, here we're kind of talking, I've kind of walked through some of the elements of the Part C plan, um, that it will cover everything that is Medicare Part A and Part B. We are required to do that. We are, you know, very in lockstep with the federal government. And federal government has to give us permission to, to sell a Part C plan, right? And so, so they're basically, when you're, when you're choosing an advantage plan, you're basically saying, hey, I, I want that health plan to manage my care. In this case, I want, if it's my company, it's, I want a line of health Aetna to manage my, my care, my part A and my part B. And then we kind of take that over and then we give you that level of benefit that original Medicare would give you plus some extra things. Mm -hmm. um, and so here we talk, we call out some of the things, dental, hearing, vision, uh, prescription drug coverage. Um, and then I'll just walk to this next slide. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this other element here, Gene. I know we're on limited time, but I'm gonna talk about the, um, the, the Medigap plans here momentarily. Yeah, so, yeah, do. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so we've got original Medicare. And then here's kind of this last slide on Medicare Advantage plans. These are some of the things that you should be looking for in your Medicare Advantage plan when you're shopping it. Um, look for some coverage that would include some dental. Look for some coverage that will do um, hearing exams and possibly hearing aids uh, and provide coverage that way. Look for some coverage that would provide coverage for eyewear, for reimbursement for glasses. Uh, Original Medicare doesn't do those first three things. And so this mm. is an opportunity for you to get some extra stuff, get some extra mm -hmm. coverage. And then prescription D or prescription drug coverage. Again, Original Medicare doesn't do that. So here's an opportunity to get that coverage that you need. Um, Emergency coverage outside the United States. Medicare doesn't have any relationship with any doctors outside the United States, nor, nor do we. But as an insurer, we say, you know what, if you do have something and you're on an advantage plan with our company, uh, you're going to have some coverage worldwide. Uh, it won't be as comprehensive as when you're here in the United States, but we will cover you for, you know, uh, emergent type of situations. Mm -hmm. This last item on this little grid here, this out-of-pocket max or out-of-pocket medical expenses, this is something that original Medicare doesn't do for people, is there's no cap on the expenses. So remember the 20% I talked about. Right. Well, there's no cap, there's no cap on that. And so with the advantage plans, there are there are caps built into these plans. So uh, like on our plan, one of our plans, the cap is at $2,800. So if you had co-pays that you had to shell out and you had a bunch of them, it would take a lot to get there, quite honestly. But if you did, once you hit 2,800, we're not going to charge you anymore the rest of the year for your coverage. You're, mm -hmm. you're capped. And so that's your protection. And original Medicare doesn't do that for you. So I say back to my, you know, I say back to my uh, people that I talk with on a daily basis, I say, you know, think about original Medicare. You know, here you can buy an Advantage plan that has a zero premium. It won't cost you anything extra than what you're paying for your Part B, 148.50 a month. And um, and you're going to have this cap. You're going to have, you know, you're going to have coverage there. And you're going to have prescription drug coverage. And you're mm -hmm. going to have, you know, these other benefits in other areas too. So those Todd, are some things that advantage. Yeah, yeah, go. These are the things that start happening to you when you get older. You know, the dental, the hearing, you know, the eyes, uh, you know, you get cataracts or, you know, it's just like, there is so many of these things that I, I mean, I honestly did not sure. know it was available until we started talking 
uh, because, uh, and I think there's a lot of people out there that don't know this is available. I mean, this is huge. Sure. These yeah. are the kind of things, you know, the dental. I was saying to my husband the other day, I don't know how people, the average person, I mean, we happen to be able to make some money, but the average person, I don't know how they afford dental. How do they get a, you know, an it's expensive. It's so expensive. So even if you have the means, it's a, it's a hello, you know, what happened there? Yeah. <laughs> it's even, huge. If you, even if you have the resources, it's a, it's like a hope oh, that's, that yeah. gets your attention for sure. Especially yeah. when we get to our age, right? Um, yeah. And, and, and so, at, and at the front end of our conversation, I mentioned kick the tires every couple of years because there's new innovations and dental is an example of it. Many mm -hmm. of the advantage plans historically when they first dipped their toe to offer some dental coverage they offered uh, basically preventive care so you could come in and you could get an extra you could get a cleaning get an x-ray get the physician's exam or the dentist's exam uh, and and that's what the advantage plan might cover maybe once a year maybe twice maybe three times a year depending on what you're paying on premium um, now Oh, and and I, I, I'm so proud of our organization in terms of what we're doing in, in, on this front is that um, we're really providing products where you get full coverage and it's like unheard of. I mean, there are so many plans out there that uh, will sell additional uh, dental products where you're paying a co-insurance. And, you know, quite honestly, there are a few plans, a few dental plans out there that I'm aware of that you don't pay 50% of a crop that you might have done. And, mm. you know, if that crown's, you know, 1200 bucks, you, you're paying 600 of it. But there are, are innovations in the plans, and we're one of them, where we're saying, we're going to cover you on those up to an allowance. We're going to give you an allowance, and, and you can spend it how you want. And, and, and when you get that crown done, we're not going to charge you 50% on it. We're going to give you everything you, that's due to you up to the allowance amount, covering it at 100%. So um, there's, there's innovations there, right? And, and, and in the market, people will, will do things to catch up, and, and so it's, it's worth kicking the tires and seeing who's doing what and, and what's out there that's innovative and, and new. Hearing aids, another example, you know, most, many plans have big co-pays on, or I should say they have, they have co-pays on the hearing aids, right? And yeah. there are plans out there that are doing things at no cost to, the, to their members. And so those are, mm -hmm. those are things that get people's attention and they kind of go, oh, you know, that's, that's a nice thing. Mm -hmm. So, so, so should we migrate over to the Medigap discussion a little bit, yeah. Gene? let's do okay. that. Let's do it. So, so I've talked about these, these, uh, you know, kind of, I think of it as three elements. There's, there's more than that, but I, that's a good way to chunk it. Original Medicare, Medicare Advantage, or Medigap or supplemental coverage. Yeah. And with, and so supplemental coverage and, 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 and uh, you know, people might ask, they might say, well, what's the right plan for me? What, you know, I've got friends who are on these Medigap plans or supplemental plans. You know, there's no right or wrong answer in terms of what, what product to purchase for you. Some of the things that, so, so with the supplemental plan, what's happening uh, kind of mechanically, so to speak, is that you're keeping original A and B coverage with Medicare. You hang on to that red, white, and blue card that you have, you give that to the provider, they're gonna, mm -hmm. Medicare is gonna be the first payer. But then you're buying additional insurance to kind of come up alongside that that supplemental, or I should say that original Medicare A and B, um, and uh, and so it does a lot of the things that original or that uh, Medicare Advantage does in terms of giving you you know helping to alleviate that copay that you'd have for hospitalization that fifteen hundred bucks you might have, or the twenty percent when I see a doctor it helps to alleviate those expenses. Um, and, and, and one of the benefits that people like about supplemental plans is that like original Medicare, I can go to any provider. I, yeah. I, I can see any provider who, who sees Medicare beneficiaries throughout the United States, throughout the country. Yeah. Uh, and so that's an advantage of a supplemental or Medigap plan that people appreciate. They like that. They say, mm -hmm. wherever I travel throughout the U.S., I'll have, I'll have kind of full coverage. If I have lab work, if I see my doctor, if I go into the hospital... I'm not going to see a bill. That's oftentimes what you what you hear from folks about Medigap plans or something. Right. Like I don't see a bill. I love that. Yeah. And so I say, awesome. That's great. Um, so for you know, and so the trade off there is just that a supplemental plan typically has a little higher price tag attached to it than the, than the, than the Advantage plans because in the Advantage plans, remember uh, you're paying a premium, of course, as you are here on the Medigap plans. 
but you're also oftentimes contributing in co-pays or co, co not usually co-insurance anymore, but, um, but mostly co-pays where you might have a co-pay for your hospitalization or you might have a co-pay to see the doctor, uh, different things that you're sharing in the cost. But remember, you've got that cap on those Advantage plans too. Mm -hmm. So on the, on the Medigap or supplemental plans, you've got uh, maybe a little bit more full coverage and a little bit more um, flexibility in terms of going to the providers uh, that, that see Medicare beneficiaries. And the trade-off that you're, that you're experiencing there is just a higher premium. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I mentioned, our Medicare Advantage plan for our organization here locally, our, highest, our most expensive plan is $152. Our least expensive plan is zero premium. There's products there for, that fit uh, both, both customers. Uh, but then on the Medigap plans, our plans started around $200 a month. And then on the Medigap plans, the one thing that, or I should say, the other thing that they don't include is the prescription drug plan. And you really oh. need a prescription drug plan. And that's important. Yeah. You're going to purchase that separate. We, we sell that, of course, but but it is something that you would you would purchase separately. And so, you know, it's not unusual for a Medigap plan. I mentioned our most expensive Advantage plan is about 150 bucks. It's not unusual for most people to be paying somewhere between 250 and 350 a month for their supplemental plan. Uh, and, and um, you know, Again, more a little bit more robust coverage in, in cases, a little bit more flexibility for providers, uh, but also it doesn't include your prescription drugs and and it doesn't include some of those spiffs that I was just showing you in that, that previous slide of uh, eyeglass reimbursement, hearing aid right. coverage, dental dental care doesn't include those, and so you're usually purchasing those separately. Mm -hmm. and such so so it's you know not right or wrong uh, in terms of the products that people choose. It's just choices. It's just thinking about what's important to me and uh, what, what makes the, the, the most sense for me. Um, yeah, and there again, it's just so important to talk about and find out you know, what's out there because right. I, boy, I sure didn't know it. Yep, exactly, exactly. And so, and the other thing I'll say, so let's say you're a customer on a Medigap or a supplemental plan and you think to yourself, you know, I might want to dip my toe in the water on these Advantage plans, but I, but I've heard my friends tell me if I leave this supplemental plan, I can never come back. <laughs> and there's some truth to that. It's not, I mean, it's not really that. It's just that um, if you've chosen, a, or I should say, when you're on a Medigap plan, um, when you're when you're first um, eligible for it, let's say when you turn 65, uh, you basically have a guaranteed. It's called, we call it guaranteed issue, but it's essentially your guaranteed right to be able to enroll in a supplemental plan without any specialized underwriting. Um, I'll, I'll just share a little bit. So, so advantage plans don't require, there's no health questions or anything like that. You don't have to, to get an advantage plan. You just have to have original Medicare A and B. And, and essentially you can get into those plans. If you had you know, a heart transplant recently or, or any other condition, you're diabetic or you got high blood pressure or anything, you can get an advantage plan. On the supplemental plans, the first six months you're eligible, you can get in. It's a guaranteed issue, no problem. They're not going to underwrite you. They're not going to ask you health questions. You're in. But after that six months, then when you come back to a medic, or I should say, then if you want to enroll in one of these uh, Medigap or supplemental plans, then you have a, uh, you might have a um, uh, an underwriting that will, will happen to see if they would accept you into the plan. And your premium might be tied to any conditions that you might have. So you might have a higher premium. And so it's not so much that you can't necessarily get back into a supplemental plan, but some people run the, they're, they're concerned, hey, if I leave this and I want to get back to it and I, and I have had a, you know, a heart condition, will I be able to get back? And there's a chance you, you may not. The one thing, the last thing I'll say on this, Gene, and I'll pause, is just that you do have, uh, if you're on a Medigap or a supplemental plan like this slide is speaking to, uh, if you have, um, if you if you took that as your first plan and you want to dip your toe into an advantage plan, you have a year, and to, to try it. And and um, the the laws are such that you, you the, that the insurers are really required to take you back into the plan you were in if it's within a 12 month period. So you could kind of try it. Now the advantage plans are designed to, for you to be in them for 12 months. So you got to be kind of careful with that. But let's say I was in a supplement Medigap plan and I said. Oh gosh, I, I want to try the advantage plan because it's so much less expensive. It's got all these extra things in it, right? Or you know, it's just got other options that I'm that are important to me, interest of me. Um, but I, you know, if I if I leave this, I want to be able to get back in. Well, I can jump into that advantage plan and give it a try. And as long as I as long as I come back to that supplemental plan within 12 months, they'll let you back in. Um, yeah. See, and I I experienced that, Todd, when I was okay. about well, as you know, I'm like 82, and I. Um, 
I had cancer and I, they, and they canceled me and I had such a hard time getting back, you know, to another plan. This was like 20 years ago, you know, 20, you know, when I was in my, you know, probably 70, 60, mid 60s. Anyway, I don't remember, but I did, I did go through that and it was very scary. I bet it was. Mm-hmm. For sure. It, it is, you know, we, we all, we all want coverage and we all know how expensive medicine can be. I, I mean, in terms of the medical system, it's, mm-hmm. it is, uh, we, we have world-class providers and, and, um, um, uh, and uh, technology, right. But mm-hmm. it all, it doesn't, I should say, you know, it, it's not cheap. It's not, it doesn't come yeah. free. Of well, they just canceled so. me. They canceled me. And I just, it mm-hmm. was like, you know, because mm. I had cancer. So wow, yeah, that's scary. That that's yeah. scary, and that doesn't happen scary. often. I I you know I don't I haven't heard that. I, I should say as much about about those types of things happening. But um, yeah, it uh, you know we all want coverage. We all all want to know yeah. we can have yeah. coverage. Uh, it's important. Um, yeah. What else was there? There's another thing. comment I wanted to make there, but yeah. So so those are kind of kind of the elements of of the things that I think about when I think about kind of the choices that people have. And uh, like I say, it's amazing to me that folks, that there is as great a number of people throughout the country that that keep their original Medicare without additional coverage. And, um, you know, and and part of it is just the notion of, well, you know, this is good enough for me and I don't want to spend any more, you know, any more than I, than I need to, this will be fine for me. But there's, there are lots of choices out there that can give you really great coverage. You know, we, you'll see these zero premium plans throughout the market, Gene, and we're one of them. We offer a zero premium plan. And people say, oh, how do you do that? You know, there's no free lunch, right? And there isn't. Yeah. Um, and so what's, what's happening on these Advantage plans is that we're realizing some of the benefits of the premiums that, that, our, benef- that our members have paid into Medicare over the years for Part A and for now for Part B, that monthly premium they're paying there. Some of that comes back over to us to manage that care. So that's how we're able to set up a plan. And then, of course, because we've got millions of insureds uh, throughout the country, we're able to design plans and kind of mix the benefits a little bit so that we get uh, products that will um, speak to, you know, kind of all, all levels. And like I said earlier, you kind of get what you pay for. If you're buying a plan that doesn't have any premium attached, then you can anticipate that your co-pays will be a little bit higher um, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, gives, gives everybody flexibility to kind of figure out what they, what they want. But I, like, I think about, you know, it's, it's, it's that opportunity to kind of work through a continuum of care, right. In terms of, you know, as I'm a younger person, presumably I'm healthier as I, as I grow in years, I might need a little bit more coverage. I might want a little bit more insurance. And so you've got those, you know, options and flexibility to think about as a, mm-hmm. as a uh, well, person. And, and, and like you just said, you know, a lot of people stick to that original plan for several reasons, but I still keep going back to the reason that they don't know what else is out there. For you sure. Know, they don't know that they can do something else. That's why they need to talk to someone like you because they just, um, I mean, we stuck to our original for, I mean, years. And then now for we're sure. talking to you guys, but um, I just still go back to that, that they just don't know what's out there. And so they just stick with what they have and they don't, know any different yeah don't you think that happens a lot todd yeah yeah well thanks thanks for that 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 bit of a plug gene and 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 so true i mean i you know so one of the things is a you know so i'm a licensed agent right and so each year i'm required to meet certain criteria of licensure i have to be able to maintain my license i have to go through ce classes and and um and so you do you know so we in the industry we get a one we get purview of what medicare wants us to be speaking to and making sure that we're compliant um and there are a lot of laws and regulations around but then also we get a chance to see what the market is too and kind of have a sense of of what it is and so you you mentioned earlier i mean it's kind of it's fun to talk about it's easy to talk about this we're in it every day and we're thinking about it Mm helping people as they have questions that all of a sudden, oh, you know, I haven't heard that one. I got to go get some information. And that's like, yeah. I can help this person yeah. and figure it out. Yeah. So if you do some well, of that, yeah. Yeah. Todd, we're running out of time, but would okay. you put up your, uh, put up your, um, oh, do you have another slide? Um, you know, it was just my Medic app. No, it's just, it's just talking, it's just a summary. So we've, we've had it, we've had it. This is just kind of, you know, covering, covering the, the, the gaps yeah. and coverage. That's what Medic cap plans do. And, uh, as it calls out here, it doesn't include Part D, but you can go out and get that from a separate uh, provider or, yeah. or a provider that includes the, the Medigap. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so okay. Just a couple well, of I love your slides. Your slides have been just really so. Um, they just explain things so simply. So thank you right. for that. Good. So Absolutely this is pleasure. your, th yeah, this is your contact here. Uh, it is. Yep. Your it is. phone number, your email. And if anybody wants to sit down and talk with you, they can call you and, um, and you'll go over their plan and you can do that on the phone or anything. Can't you? I can. Absolutely. Uh, you bet. Happy to help out. Okay. Uh, any way that I can. And, and uh, so my phone there at 612-845-2296. And then my email there, it's a long extension at the end. It's alinahealthatna.us.com. Yeah, and, uh, that's a long one. It is a long one. It's a long one. I, you know, I, when I give that, I kind of emphasize it. Okay, here it is. But um, yeah, so happy to, happy to help any of your membership, Gene, and, and yeah. uh, viewership. I, uh, you know, like, like I said, we're, I'm happy to, to connect with folks you know. and, and yeah. uh, give them the information we, they need. Right now, we're we're busy in our uh, annual enrollment period, but certainly throughout the year as well, as people yeah. might view this information, um, we are here to help. And and there are you know different situations that make people eligible throughout the year for their Medicare changes or or you know, switch and so forth. Uh, right now, yeah. you know, that, that time of October fifteenth yeah. through December seventh is a big. Time. But I think that's important too, Todd, is to tell people that, you know, because we are getting bombarded with all the Medicare stuff. And I think For it's sure. important to, to, that they know that they can do it throughout the year. You bet. Right? Yep. They, yeah. There are Maybe options that way. You bet there are. Yep. It doesn't, it doesn't apply to every person in every situation. Uh, but, but there are certainly instances that make people eligible when they may have thought okay. they weren't. Okay. So. All right, good. Well, Todd, it's just been such a delight. And uh, I just, I, I, I've learned so much and I know that our followers um, will keep learning about it because we're going to keep posting this. So um, I just thank you so much for being a part of Aging But Dangerous. And hey. Awesome. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we've got to keep we try to keep these women up to date on what's going on in this world and they're doing a pretty good job of it. So thank you for being I am sure it's a for I know it's a formidable force. So, yeah, so that's awesome. It yeah. is. Okay. Yeah. All right, okay. Todd. Have a great day. Great. Thank you so much, Gene. Appreciate yeah. the opportunity. Thank you. All right, you bet. We did it. We did it.